Let them fight. It's the Battle of the Monster Movies because your geek history lesson is now in session. Hello and welcome to Geek History Lesson. I'm Ashley Victoria Robinson. And I'm Jason Godzuki Inman. Welcome to your mind university because this is Geek History Lesson, the podcast where we talk about one movie, one book, one character in pop culture and tell you everything you got to know about them. And today we're not just talking about a character. We are talking about a king among pop culture. Not that king. We're going to talk about him maybe next week. Maybe we'll see. Uh, But we're talking about a king lizard. That is Mr. Godzilla himself. Godzilla Smith, I believe, is his full name, right? Godzilla Smith. <laughs> <laughs> Mr. Thunder Lizard Smith. <laughs> yes. Um, and I'm very excited because, of course, uh, you know, Godzilla versus Kong, uh, Dawn of Monster Island is coming soon to a theater near you. <laughs> That's not even remotely what that movie's <laughs> called. <laughs> what, is it Godzilla versus Kong? No, it's Kong versus Godzilla. Oh, Kong gets the top billing? Yeah. Oh, good for him. All right. Well, we're talking about that because that's going to be hitting HBO Max in theaters very soon or far in the past if you're listening to this in the future. But we're very excited to, because I know, Ashley, you've been wanting to talk about Godzilla for a very long time. And I know our fans have been wanting to talk about Godzilla for a very mm-hmm. long time. And we have a whole bunch of fans that have requested this episode. Yeah, so we have a bunch of TAs this episode, including Rachel Krogan, Danny Evers, Stephanie Dorsey, Chartier, and at Kiefer underscore XJ. Thank you so much for requesting this lesson on Godzilla. And because Jason and I did not think that we were experts enough, today we are joined by Ghostbusters and Spider-Man scribe, author of the introduction to science, the elements of dark energy, and current writer of Godzilla, Monsters, and Protectors from IDW Publishing, which is on shelves uh, like a minute in the future from the time we're recording. Please welcome everybody, Eric Burnham. Man, well, that was some kind of introduction. <laughs> <laughs> it's all true, by the way. Is that, is, that ex- is that exactly like how Godzilla is some kind of lizard? Please, That's it. welcome to the stage, Eric Burnham. <laughs> <laughs> is your oh, middle name Thunder Lizard? <laughs> I mean, it's not not Thunder Lizard. Yeah, it is now. <laughs> yeah. Uh, Eric, uh, thank you so much for joining us here on Geek History Lesson, man. Oh, well, thank man. Thank you for having me. I appreciate it. Um, now, real quick, in in case the listeners uh, don't know who you are, and, and that's a damn shame, I say, um, g- quickly give a quick background on, on, on some of your you know writing. And, and like I said, we said you were working on Godzilla monsters and protectors right now. So you are literally a Godzilla comic book writer, which is... Something that, you know, we can't claim. But um, what are some other products that they might know you from or some interesting things you've worked on in the past? Okay, the uh, project that most people probably know me from is Ghostbusters, which I've uh, written for IDW for about a decade. uh, With detours into some Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles, uh, Transformers. I'm writing the Beast Wars series that's going on right now. And uh, gosh, what else is uh, uh, Back to the Future, Red Sonja, Vampirella? Other little uh, bits and bobs around that. Just a whole bunch of fun licensed comics. Yeah, so you are just a king of slipping into another creator's world and then just working some magic. Because, by the way, everybody out there, uh, Transformers Beast Wars, I've read it. It's great. It's really good. Really good. And I'm and I'm not even really that much of a Transformers guy. Well, that's, that's, that's the way to, to hook it. Yeah, I can get away with a lot more with the people who aren't major fans of the property. They don't know when I'm doing something wrong. <laughs> um, I'll say this right now, and people can fight me on Twitter. You're never doing anything wrong, Eric. Oh, <laughs> thank you. <laughs> uh, all right, everybody. Now, real quick before we get into the Godzilla talk, we just want to remind you that we have launched a brand new podcast on Patreon over at patreon.com slash Jawan. It is called Jason and Jeremy John about Justice League. It is where me and my best friend, Jeremy Skinner, are reviewing every single episode of Justice League animated series with so many segments and jingles that you can't stand it. Well, we don't have that many, but we're hoping to get a lot. It's a lot of fun, and we have a special offer now until the end of March that if you come on over and join uh, past and future Justice Pod supporters for the month of March, we'll get a postcard that is signed by moi, myself, and... Uh, have Just League Art on top of it. So it's pretty cool. Well, this is like the second podcast in like a month where you busted out some pretty good French. Is that, a, is that French? Moi is French. Oh. We say so. Oh, you knew what that. Grand Dame meant and I didn't That's think right. you would. That's right. And you're doing uh, well. <laughs> so anyways, uh, patreon.com slash Jawin, J-A-W-I-N. Come, come check that out. Uh, now, besides podcast announcements and a special guest, 
and a giant lizard who's going to come eat us all. Uh, we do have a disclaimer, don't we? Ashley? Yes, I would like to start with the disclaimer. Nobody here speaks fluent Japanese. Nobody is a native Japanese speaker. We are all doing our best. So please, we are trying to approach the subject matter and the pronunciations with as much respect and skill as we have. But please approach us with kindness. If you want to make corrections later, that's all totally good. But just, we're all primarily Anglophones. That's all I got to say about that. So I'm going to move right into the Tencent origin, which is the first part of the podcast. And Godzilla, as you may know, you probably know, is a fictional Japanese kaiju, arguably the most iconic kaiju. Kaiju means big monster. Uh, he is also known as the king of the monsters, no matter what Matthew Broderick says. Don't trust him. Don't trust that movie, in my opinion, who was created initially by Tomoyuki Tanaka, Ishiro Honda, and E.G. Subaraya, I'm so sorry. Uh, his first appearance was in Godzilla from 1954, which, by the way, is currently streaming on HBO Max at the time of this recording for no additional fees, so go check that out. And he was originally designed by Akira Watanabe and Teizo Toshimitsu. I wanted to shout them out specifically because Godzilla is an iconic design. He's not just a dinosaur. When you see Godzilla, you know he's Godzilla. And I also want to talk a little bit about the name because in the anglicized version, we say Godzilla, and you have heard a lot of the Japanese pronunciation is closer to Gojira. Uh, and it is a portmanteau of the Japanese words go, uh, Gorira, which is like gorilla, and Kujira, which is whale, um, which is based on the fact that at one point in the planning stage, Godzilla was described as, quote, a cross between a gorilla and a whale, end quote. There were really silly drawings of this. It doesn't actually mean it was going to be like he was going to be a whale with big hulked out arms or anything like that. The uh, description is more ascribed to the size and the power of his, you know, creatureness and the aquatic origin, stuff like that. I'm just going to say this right now, that if they are not considering gorilla whale as like his <laughs> like you know after Kong versus Godzilla, if we get gorilla whale versus Godzilla, I would be very pleased. Look. Asylum Pictures, Gorilla Whale, Eric and Jason will write it, I will star, call us at any time, we are very employable. Uh, there is sort of an anachronistic but very popular story as well that Gojira was a nickname of a uh, heavy stagehand at Toho Studios. Toho is the studio that um, produced Godzilla. Uh they say that this was Kimi Honda. Um, the window widow of the director said that that was not true, but that is... Uh, this sort of anachronistic story that's kind of been floating around the internet. Uh, Godzilla has been portrayed in live action by Haruo Nakajima, Katsumi Tezuka, Hiroshi Sakita, Seiji Onaka, Shinji Takaji, Isao Zushi, and Toru Kawai. I know I didn't get their pronunciations of their names completely right, but I wanted to shout out some of the amazing people who have put on those rubber suits and brought this character to life. He has starred in 32 films produced by Toho, so the Japanese production company for which he origina originated, four Hollywood films, and numerous video games, novels, comic books, and television shows, including the one that Eric is behind right now. So the next time you go to a kaiju-themed cocktail party, you can give anyone the download on Godzilla. Let's move right now into the next part of the podcast. Jason, what's that going to be? That's the meet cute. That's where Ashley and I and Eric are going to tell you all where we first meted and cuted Godzilla because, you know, that's a term we stole from romantic comedies. And uh, we all need to know where we first met Mr. Gorilla Well. So, Eric, I'm going <laughs> to ask you right here. Where, okay. When did you first discover or do you remember the first Godzilla movie you ever watched? How did you find this giant lizard? Okay, well, I was familiar with just – seeing him in pop culture popping up in uh, in images and magazines and comics and so on. But uh, the first thing that I remember just being really excited for, I was in second grade uh, in Vancouver, Washington, and uh, Godzilla 1985 was going to come on as the movie of the week. And I was just like all hepped uh, for a whole week long. You know, I'm going to stay up later and I'm going to watch Godzilla. It's exciting. There were so many commercials uh, at the time, of course, and that was frustrating to me. And because Godzilla doesn't show up a whole lot in some of the Godzilla movies until closer to the end, and I was, I was running out of steam by the time he showed up. But those commercials for uh, for the movie of the week just captured my attention, and I was super excited for it, and you know, kind of latched onto it at that point. Nice, nice, Ashley. Uh, how did you first meet Godzilla? 
Uh, so my story is not dissimilar to Eric's. Um, I was definitely familiar with the idea of Godzilla just from the larger popular culture sphere. I think that's true of most people who were born after 1954. Uh, so it's the swaths, generations, legions of people, I think, kind of have that same thing. Um, I have never seen uh, the first American movie, but... The Christmas after it came out, we got a ton of Godzilla toys, um, <laughs> including a hand puppet that went over my elbow. I remember that. And made the sounds and lit up. And I took that thing in the tub and it didn't make any sounds after that. So that is like my first really palpable memory. But I want to do a little uh, divergent, a little tangent, if I may. Uh, Shin Godzilla is the most recent Godzilla movie that came from Toho. It's really freaking good highly highly recommend Shin Godzilla really cool um, and they do the opposite so in America we cast people who say they can speak French but they speak French like with an anglicized uh, accent or they say they can speak German or they say they can speak Japanese but they're anglophone so they speak with an anglicized accent in this movie there is a fully Japanese woman who's supposed to be half American and was raised in America she speaks English heavy Japanese accent so it was interesting sort of to see the opposite side of that but I got to go to the Shin Godzilla premiere. I got to go to the Junket in Los Angeles uh, because I was working for comicbook.com at the time. They sent me to do a bunch of interviews. I did coverage. I was I wrote a review. They paid me for all of this. Did you meet Godzilla? I did not. Sadly. Damn it. But <laughs> none of the material I generated was ever published and has, was never put up on the website. And I just think that's really hilarious. And that, that happens all the time in journalism. It happens a lot. In, so we could say that Godzilla won after all. Absolutely. It happens a lot in publishing of fictional material as well. But like I had a great time and I did a lot of work on for them for this junket and it never saw the light of day. And I I'm never going to get a chance to tell that story anywhere else. So I just thought I'd I just that also up. want to assure our uh, regular listeners that Action Figure Spotlight. We will <laughs> on on our Twitter. We will find the uh, picture of the Godzilla puppet. Ashley was looking around. I've already made a note of it. Okay, great. <laughs> we will share the picture because I, I remember this. Yeah, it, it's yeah, kind of yeah. like that's one of those toys. It's huge. It's like Hulk hands. Yes. It like stands out in your mind. Uh, Jason, what is your Godzilla meet cute? Close us out for this section. Um. So I, I, you know, yes, you are correct. It's hard not to be just generally familiar with Godzilla just to mm -hmm. kind of know who he was. I remember, and I tell the story a lot, that on the Saturday afternoon movies where the gentleman in my local Kansas community would sell uh, metal siding for houses. Oh, yes. We've heard lots about him yes, on the show. Uh, <laughs> der der derailed commodity. He, <laughs> one of the movies they played was the original Godzilla. Now, I didn't really pay attention to it because as I was a little kid when I saw it. I thought it was kind of goofy. And so I would almost say that my first interaction with Godzilla is, is it 98? I believe so, yes. The 98 Godzilla movie. I saw that at the Gas City, Kansas drive-in uh, <laughs> on opening weekend, and I think even then I thought it was bad. But I will say this. We did have the VHS of it. So at some point, one of us kids asked for Godzilla on VHS. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So now we're going to head into the rest of the lesson. I know people are probably expecting this to be a typical history lesson, but the thing is with movies you just got to watch the movie. So we're going to do this a little bit differently. And instead of going through um, almost 40 films and an infinite number of additional material, um, we are going to encourage you to take full advantage of your HBO Max subscription and dive in yourselves. Eric and I both have seen most, if not all, a lot of Godzilla movies. We really like giant monsters. Uh, Jason has seen some and is pro Godzilla. So what we're going to do is we're going to pitch which Godzilla movie we think Jason should watch. He's going to ask some questions and then at the end he's going to declare a winner and uh, my bet's on Eric. I just want to say this right now. <laughs> Ashley said I am pro Godzilla. I like the big lizard but well, that's what I meant. if I'm in a Kong versus Godzilla fight, I have said this on the internet, I am pro Kong. <laughs> he is a king for a reason. I just meant that uh, you haven't not seen every Godzilla movie because yeah. you're not interested no, in the no. character. No, no, and that you guys, both of you, and that's the reason why we invited Eric on the podcast as well, is because both of you I know have seen way more Godzilla movies than I have. Uh, Ashley, because you love them, and Eric for work. And uh, man, what a job, Eric! Uh, <laughs> <laughs> Pinching myself, yes. Yeah, um, but I have not seen a lot of 
I've seen more of the recent Godzilla movies, not like the oldie, like the 60s, 70s ones. Yeah, this is the opposite of when we were watching all the James Bond movies. <laughs> yes, And I right. had only seen the recent ones. So Ashley, uh, kick us off. What Godzilla movie do you think uh, that I, and, and by respect the listeners, should check out? Mm -hmm. So I am going to go and throw it all the way back. I am going to the OG and the one that said it all, 1954's Godzilla. Uh, I'm going to say that... It is arguably the most important monster movie that has ever been made. Uh, I will acknowledge that it stands on the shoulders of King Kong. King Kong debuted before Godzilla. Um, but King Kong, in my opinion, in contemporary history, in terms of art, culture, and film specifically, there's before World War II, feels like the ancient world to most people. And after World War II, is kind of from the... 50s on feels modern in a way that things from before that era don't. And I think King Kong is part of that um, older generation of film and storytelling and King uh, and Godzilla being very post-World War II and very affected by events at the time, uh, kind of created for the modern world what we think of now and what I lovingly refer to as big dumb monster movies, except it's not a big dumb monster movie. It masquerades as a big, dumb monster movie, but it is like so much more than that. And I think it is because the creatives who are looking to channel, or I'm sorry, I think creatives who are looking to channel the pandemic experience right now that we are all living through at the time of this recording should look to this original Godzilla movie for inspiration because it took this really horrific event that affected literally everyone and managed to present it in an interesting way that wasn't just a movie about people suffering from the actual event. I don't want any movies coming out of 2020 and 2021 called Contagion. That movie's not any good. Um, and Jason actually pointed out to me that Kong Skull Island does a similar thing, um, which is why we think that that's a pretty good King Kong yeah, movie. I, I always think that Kong Skull Island is a pretty good metaphor for the Vietnam War. And like they literally in that movie make Kong a walking metaphor of the Vietnam War. Yes. Which I think is why that movie, that's why I think that movie works. Um, and it's also, I my hot take as someone who has not seen but is very excited for uh, Godzilla vs. Kong. We're going to get all the, that title wrong a million times, so just tweet me, whatever. Um, I don't know if I believe American studios should make Godzilla movies. I think it is in the bones of Japanese culture, the way Superman is in the bones of American culture, Doctor Who is in the bones of English culture. I think it is such a quintessentially Japanese story and experience. And I think the original movie is so incredible uh, because it's, it's a very obvious metaphor. It's been stated in interviews for half a century now, longer than that, um, that it is a metaphor for the bombs that were dropped on Hiroshima and Nagasaki. Um, and everybody who touched this film in any way, shape, or form was alive for those horrific events. And they bring that energy into the film, whether they were living in those, well, they obviously could have been living in those cities, but whether or not they were outside those cities or they had relatives who were affected by it, everyone working in 1954 knew that this happened and the premiere cast and everyone who had been working on the film as adults. So they would, this would have been very much in their minds. And 1954's Godzilla has a ton of scenes of uh, characters screaming, fleeing, um, and suffering. You've seen this parody in everything that's ever come since, them running away from the big threat. And it's very arresting and genuinely unsettling um, to watch these actors and these extras um, and a lot of Japanese Coast Guard members running away from these rear projections because of the energy that they're bringing into the film because that was something that was so close in their personal history. The movie itself is super moody. It's evocative. It reminded me a lot, particularly in the opening 20 minutes, of a Herman Melville story because if you read... <laughs> uh, go with me on this, okay? okay? If you read Billy Budd, which is the only Herman Melville I can honestly recommend, I, I can't really recommend Moby Dick because it's just such a slog. But <laughs> any Herman Melville is about the water and the rain and the crests of the waves and the rocking of the ship and the people huddled together on the deck playing music and telling stories. And on Odo Island, which is the community that's initially affected by the events of Godzilla coming up from being affected by the H-bomb tests, um, it's all this B-roll of trees waving in the breeze and waves crashing and boats crashing on the shores and wind and rain. And because it's the 50s, the lighting outside isn't that good. So it's very creepy and very moody. 
in a sort of art school style in a way that you don't think of a tentpole movie being. Obviously, there were no tentpole movies at the time. That's more modern. There were literally movies made with tents and poles. There you go. <laughs> then Godzilla. But it is a, it, it has this really cool, like, artsy edge to it that obviously the more popular it got and then the more American it became, we don't have that in contemporary Godzilla uh, movies. Uh, Counselor, do you, would you like me to wait until you finish your argument for uh, follow-up questions? Uh, no, you can. No, that's fine. Okay, we, I've been talking for a long time. Oh, well, it's a, yeah, okay. Um, <laughs> So you mentioned that it kind of feels artsy and and it has an edge to it Mm -hmm. that you think later Godzilla movies uh, lose. Mm -hmm. What about the movie makes you make that statement? I I mean, obviously a huge part of it is it's filmed in black and white, uh, which was a limitation of the time. Mm -hmm. Uh, That's not something that we do anymore. And I think in the modern age, everything black and white feels intentionally artsy, even if that's not the case. But um like when God's when the gods when Godzilla is attacking later in the movie and he's using what we now think of as being his atomic breath, mm-hmm. it's literally just some compressed air that's being shot out of a puppet. And the way that you see how effective it is is it's the aftermath. So you see the spray and then you slowly watch in stop motion as the model crumbles because this time it's freeze breath. Or you slowly watch the models catch on fire because this time it's fire breath. Like because they were so limited, the tricks that they used to tell the story and get the emotions across are really, really basic. And I find them really evocative. And also because this is 1954, every time someone's having a a really big feeling they'll either stare right into the camera right off center of the camera or they'll fling themselves down in a stylization that we don't do anymore so really it feels that way because it was incredibly cheap incredibly limited does and it, made in the 1950s does it feel very melodramatic it doesn't feel melodramatic okay all right um i mean Obviously, we don't have women. Women don't just throw themselves in a well, heap on the ground what, anymore. When I say that, I don't mean like, because obviously, you know, acting changes and yes. acting in the 50s is different than acting now. And that's why you can't judge. But, but you know, even in the past and now, you know melodrama when you see it. I don't think it feels melodramatic. I actually think the acting is okay. really good. And the human story actually matters because the human story in the OG Godzilla is about good people who are upset by the actions of bad people. Um, and it, I don't remember and it anything from this movie. I'm going to say this right now. It positions Godzilla as the innocent. Contemporary Godzilla movies position Godzilla as the the bad guy a lot of the times. Until, is, until he turns good at the uh, end. Absolutely. Yeah. He was wreaking this destruction. The head character is a scientist who doesn't understand why we want to kill Godzilla. Like He understands that Godzilla has gone on this rampage and hurt innocent people, but Godzilla, he keeps bringing up, Godzilla has... Um, an immunity to radiation. Why aren't we studying this? That's his question. Why aren't we studying this? Why aren't we studying That's this? That's fascinating. And then the supporting characters are his daughter and his daughter's fiance, who, by the way, very handsome. Uh, and so it all ties into their whole emotional resonance ties into Godzilla, but not in like a Millie Bobby Brown way of like, I'm 12, so please don't crush me. I find the story, like I like these characters And they're not just giving me wild plot twists. Um, I want to shout out some of the actors. So the scientist that I mentioned, Dr. Yamane, is played by Takashi Shimura. He grounds the movie with the rest of the cast. I think he gives a really powerful performance. Plus, he reminds me of David Suzuki, Canadian Japanese icon. Uh, Emiko Yamane is his daughter. She's played by Momoko Kochi. Um... Who, like I said, is a classic 50s ingenue. She does throw herself around and cry a lot. And then her um, fiancé is Hideto Ogata, who's played by Akira Takarada, who, very handsome, has the best hair in the movie. He plays a strong leading man and is still alive. So I fully thought everyone who worked on this movie was dead. Uh, But he was not. The last movie he made was in 2019, according to IMDb. And... He appeared in a cameo in the 2014 American Godzilla movie. Uh, the very first of the new remakes. Yeah, which the I think is fight. so cool. Um, I think also the last thing I'm going to say um, is that the original Godzilla movie is required watching for anybody who either wants to make movies or get into storytelling because it does a lot with very little. The thrust of the movie is big, scary monster. How do we defeat? And it crumbles into an examination of how responsible are we for wreaking havoc on the world around us? Godzilla lived in tunnels underneath Odo Island and never came to bother anyone until we started dropping radiation in the ocean. Is he the bad guy or are we the bad guy? And you don't see a lot of big dumb monster movies grappling with this type of thing. 
anymore. And I think sometimes that's why they feel lacking. So go back to where it started. That's my hot take. Uh, Ashley, excellent. Excellent case for the original Godzilla. Um, I have a lot of things to consider here. Um, I will say that you did intrigue me. There's a lot of good stuff in there. Um, part of my argument between the two of you guys' Godzilla choices are I am going to judge the Godzilla roar. So I have brought up here. I will say when I when I rewatched this movie uh, and the Godzilla, every time the Godzilla roar came on, uh, GHL intern Kat Brego fled the room. <laughs> so and it was Toho, effective. All Toho right. guards very closely what they mix together to create the sound effects, so nobody really knows what it is. All right, so I found a clip. Here is the, OG. the 1954 original uh, Godzilla roar. This is from a YouTube video, so I apologize. There might be some weird music or some funky stuff, and let's just let's 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 see what happens. Let's see what happens. I, I apologize, listeners. All right, here we, here we go. Okay. All right. Also, the movie, the music in that movie is really sounds good. like Godzilla. <laughs> yeah. All right. Cool. Yeah. All right, Mr. Burnham. Uh, the case has been made for the original Godzilla film. What Godzilla film do you think myself and the listeners of GHL should check out? Man, this was tough. I was bouncing around all kinds of different eras of Godzilla. But before I get into mine, what I want to add, uh, the first time I saw the original Godzilla, it was the recut American version with uh, Raymond Burr. And they, oh, they hell yeah. cut they <laughs> cut so much out. So much. Oh, so, so when they, I finally so they took your movie and they put an American actor in it? There yeah. you go. Yeah. What? Yeah. But no, no, no. Uh, so the first one, I, but uh, so watching the the actual, <laughs> the 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 original cut, I was struck by a scene where they were on a train talking about just barely getting out from uh, before yes. the bombs dropped. And I was just, I mean, that just made me do a double take and rewind the scene to watch it again. It was not something I expected from a Godzilla movie, from a, a you know, science fiction monster movie. It was uh, just... Uh, gripping. Yeah, there's literally a woman who's like, ugh. So they've announced that there's bomb shelters, so you can, or there's underground shelters you can go hide from Godzilla movie. And this woman is like, ugh, I barely made it out of Nagasaki. I don't want to have to go hide from Godzilla now. And it's like, it's played like she's a dumb, you know, complaining lady. But like Eric said, it's like, it really drives home how close to well, those you real think, world events. When you think about it in the context of when they filmed it, it gets a little scary. It's, it's yeah. startling, yeah. So thank you, Eric, for bringing that up. <laughs> oh, yeah. Um, yeah, so I, I thought about the uh, the recent uh, Millennium series with Godzilla Final Wars because he fights all the monsters, and it's ridiculous. I thought about uh, one from the 70s, Godzilla versus Mecha Godzilla, because there was just ridiculous yes, amounts so of gushing blood that I, I'm like, I don't remember this at all. Godzilla's got a nasty neck. There's three spurts of blood going. <laughs> um, they're fantastic. But the one that stuck with me, oddly, it's going to feel like a retread. It was the first sequel. 1955, Godzilla nice. Raids Again. Excellent yeah. choice. Yeah, it was, uh, Godzilla looked a little different. He was like lanky. You know, he reminded me of like the, the body shape of Goofy. But... Uh, <laughs> But it was still it was still a, a pretty, uh, you know, it had uh, drama in the uh, in the uh, human interactions. And uh, they had a they had a bit. Uh, the actor was uh, Minoru Chaki as Koji. And he's played as, uh, you know, the uh, little bit of the comic relief. They call him the groom because he's always looking for a wife. He's a pilot. And uh, <laughs> it's just like, OK, things are either going to go really well or really poorly for this guy. And of course, he has a tragic ending in the movie. And I just, I, I guess I kind of wasn't expecting that, even though I should have. He's, you know, he's causing an avalanche to trap Godzilla so Godzilla can't get free and, and uh, get some other things going. But uh, the uh, the big thing about this one is it's also the first time Godzilla fights another giant monster, which was uh, Anguirus. Ang Anguirus? Uh, anyway. Anyway, yeah. <laughs> anyway, yeah. A giant ankylosaurus. They were they were they were having a lot of fun playing fast and loose with the science. He has brains all through his body, so he moves even faster. And uh, it was a goofy thing, but it was fun to see uh, in in when they're still playing the uh, the movies relatively seriously, even without the uh, gushing blood, to see him uh, fight another giant monster and then you know keep going after people. Anyway, first sequel, and uh, I think it holds up really well, almost as well as the original. Now, Eric, um, counselor, uh, I have some follow-up questions for you. Um, what is the explanation for why does Godzilla come back in the sequel? Like, what what is their explanation for why he returns? It's another Godzilla. 
Okay, so he returns because there's another evil monster out there that we need Godzilla to fight. No, I, they, the 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 return is it's just a, a new Godzilla. He's he's not <laughs> he, the same Godzilla. He's, he was destroyed in the first one. It's a different. It's yeah. It's just a, it's a new Godzilla. Yeah, they murder him in the first one. They they like oh uh, yeah. They unleash a a bomb that can take all the oxygen out of the water. The scientist needlessly sacrifices himself because he's sad and the hot guy has to live, and uh, Godzilla dies. So it's not technically Godzilla. Well, sure it is. It's, it's called Godzilla. It's branded. It's made by Toho. It's Godzilla. <laughs> yeah, it's, it's a Godzilla. He's a species. Oh, Godzilla is the species now. Okay. Yeah, that was a, that's what it is. Yeah, yeah they, was, they have aughts. Oh, okay. I was like naming the, the, the specific creature was named Godzilla because, again, I know we know have, we have a Godzuki out there. So, um, all right. So, because this is the movie that introduces monster v. monster fights, which is kind of what these movies have become, and more so than just monster versus society. Um, even the the two to twenty fourteen Godzilla movie was monster v monster. Like we learned that there was another monster out there that has to be fight. Um, so Eric, okay, what like what intentionally? So you pick the sequel instead of the original. What do you think the sequel does better than the original movie? Well, I think uh, better's better's a tough thing to say, but it does add on to the stuff that worked from the first movie, and then it adds new things as as it was another monster for him to fight the first one didn't have that gives it a little bit more action and increases the amount of things that they can do if this one is successful and moves on to another sequel which of course it did um so yeah it was just it was neat to see them add to the lore while still keeping the feel of the original movie I also, not to argue for the other side, but uh, the second Godzilla movie is is single-handedly responsible, as you pointed out, for monster v. monster. And it sets up the possibilities of some of the more iconic characters like Rodan and Mothra to be brought in. Like, it literally reinvents the genre that Godzilla just reinvented. Uh, Eric, let me ask you this question as well. Um, how are the human characters in Godzilla 2? Are they fascinating, interesting at all, or are they kind of all forgettable? Well, uh, it varies from movie to movie. Sometimes <laughs> sometimes they are a little bit forgettable. But again, I do think Raids has some interesting characters floating around. I mentioned Koji as one of them. He stood out just because he had a little bit of comic relief with a tragic ending. And uh, it's, it's a thing that some of the movies – that you know, all the Godzilla movies uh, try to find that, uh, that hook for the human drama because you know it cuts down on the special effects that they need. But uh, – but uh, yeah, this one I think this this uh, the first two had the strongest to me human story. I would say besides maybe the Mothra twins, who you oh, know, yeah. um, when did they show up? Do you remember? In the movie called Mothra. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> uh, they, they're, they're, and then they, in subsequent Godzilla, actually the Mothra Tins made a cameo in the last American Godzilla movie, but only in a, no, in Kong versus Godzilla, I apologize, but only in a photograph. Um, but, um, the, uh, but I was going to say like, uh, you know, uh, thunder lizard breath to my head. I couldn't tell you what their, uh, government names are. They're just the Mothra twins. You know what I mean? I don't know. I don't know what their names are. I think it's good I don't, enough. I don't know that they have names other than you know their collective Shobijin, but i don't know the new movies that they're the mothra twins either i'm sure i was in confused a, in an extended universe somewhere yes someone has named them like you know sakura and tomoya or something like that <laughs> eric what's the remind me of the title of, of godzilla 2 basically again uh godzilla raids again godzilla and if you don't again. enunciate that right yes. it sounds like a western yes it does <laughs> godzilla rides again oh i love it um Eric, let me ask you this. How do they, you know, spoilers. Again, these movies came out a long time ago, everybody. But, Eric, how does, do they kill this second Godzilla in Godzilla 2? I believe they did, but now, gall dang it, my mind has went blank. Oh, <laughs> there was, no, they they uh, they dropped an avalanche and some bombs on him. God, man. So there's a third Godzilla. There's There are hundreds of thousands of Godzillas somewhere in the center of the earth, then. <laughs> Um, we have a problem. We do have a problem. Um, all right, I found the roar from 1955's Godzilla. All right, let's see here. Let's see what this sounds like. Here we go, everybody. I hear more of the music. I don't know. I, maybe I picked a bad video. I'm sorry, everybody. <laughs> <laughs> so well, Jason, it was there at the end. <laughs> Jason, in, in your esteemed opinion... Who wins on the roars? The roars alone. Uh, well, I I'm gonna judge it on Godzilla one uh, wins the roar contest. So there's a point to Godzilla one over God's 
<laughs> over Western Godzilla, Godzilla Rides Again. Um, but I'm also going to say that that was probably because there was a bad YouTube video. Um, I would like to ask some questions to uh, the prosecutors, if I may. Uh, <laughs> we're both prosecutors? Yes, we are in I a... I think t- we're both the... What's the other defend? Not defendants. Who I, represents the defendants? I feel like I'm an arbiter or a judge, and you guys are lawyers, like making some sort I of. I kind of feel like Eric and I are like, you know, that picture that keeps going viral of the couple from the '90s getting a divorce, divvying up their beanie babies. I feel like Eric and I are divvying up our Godzilla action figures right now. And you're the moderator. <laughs> <laughs> Haven't seen that meme, but okay. <laughs> oh, it, I've seen it so much. Although I will say, when we were setting this podcast up, and I was emailing Eric, I said I would really like to stand up for the original Godzilla, and he said that's fine. So. No, he's definitely the better sport than I am. Um, Eric, I'd love to start with you. Um, you talked about that you went through a lot of the Godzillas. It's interesting to me that both of you picked like OG in, within the first five movies. Um, why? What? What? What influenced your decision to stay within the first five Godzilla movies? Because again, we have twenty years of other Godzilla movies after this, even more than that. Well, I mean, the uh, the other ones are fun. They have, you know, more monster fighting. I mentioned, you know, the massive gushing blood and, and some of the jokes that uh, translate and some of them that don't. There's a lot of weirdness as they go along. There's, <laughs> there's uh, a lot of problems solved by just saying it was aliens, tons of aliens in the Godzilla movies. And uh, then later mutants and, and, and super powered people and... All kinds of, you know, I mean, it it could be some of the movies could be a a Star Wars movie, you know, uh, for all intents and purposes. So I just liked the the focus and uh, I'm not going to say realism, the the, the truth to the story, the the realistic uh, feel to the story that the uh, the original two had. Uh, I have found another clip. Let's listen to the Godzilla raids again. Roar. Here we go. Let's hope. Let's hope, everybody. It's a lot of walking. Yeah, that's definitely much better. That was pretty good. Uh That was pretty good. So, okay, I'm going to give the point to Godzilla Rides again. Uh, (laughs) uh, For the roar, for the roar. Uh, Ashley, um... Same question to you. Why Why go back all the way to the original one? Why none of the, again, like, yeah, there's Godzilla. Because I, I know you're a big Mothra fan, so I'm surprised you didn't pick a Godzilla versus Mothra fan uh, yeah, movie. Yeah, so I almost did. Go, so Mothra was introduced in a movie called Mothra, uh, which is great. But I almost did Godzilla versus Mothra, which came out in 1992 in Japan. And I think 1998 was when it was officially distributed in America. It was quite some time later. Um also, if you ever Google when did Godzilla and Mothra anything, the autofill is always when did Godzilla and Mothra get married? They never got married. Um, <laughs> if we're doing couples, I guess she's Rodan's girlfriend. Godzilla but, Godzilla weds again. Yes, uh, Godzilla has never had a wife or a girlfriend as far as we know, um, except in that one movie when Godzilla was a lady. <laughs> but... Um, I just think the original Godzilla is so special and so iconic. And, um, you know, you and I have watched a lot of the older AFI movies in the last year or so. I know a lot of people are going back and revisiting some classics and some old faves as we've been stuck inside with so much content to stream. My head's going to explode. Um, And when you go back to the 1950s and before and something still holds up and is still totally watchable and enjoyable, I just hold it in so much more respect than a contemporary movie that maybe appeals more to my sensibilities or is funnier or has tricks that are better, better effects. And I think I I rewatched the original Godzilla four days ago and it was freaking awesome so i on the podcast with comics i always try to advocate for going back to the beginning and respecting the origin so when we were structuring this uh unless eric had said he really wanted to do it and like i said he's more gracious than i um i knew that was what my choice was going to be i thought about doing um godzilla 2000 but i knew you wouldn't stand for that so like i thought about trying to do it ironically because that that is a big that movie is big dumb fun i love that movie but is it good? You would have lost right out the gate. I don't. I don't know if it's good. I also thought about pandering to your tastes and picking Godzuki's first appearance. Oh! <laughs> <laughs> 
Uh, but that didn't seem like the movie there. Uh, Mothra's a feminist icon, even though uh, nobody would let me write that article four years ago. <laughs> uh, okay, let me ask you a question, and if you don't have an answer to this, that's totally, totally fine. Oh, actually, Eric, let me ask you this. Would you have picked Godzilla 1 if, uh, if Ashley hadn't taken it? Oh yeah, yeah no, I would have picked Godzilla one. <laughs> no, it's it's great, and, and see, I, I and and the most recent one that I actually watched just I watched just because the title was so insane. It wasn't you know, Godzilla versus anything. It it was, it was. Uh, Godzilla, Mothra, King Ghidorah, All Out Monster Attack. Oh, yeah. I mean, I just had to. I had to watch That's that a movie. Great title. The it's, Japanese it's fantastic. Naming conventions are excellent, like no others. Um, I would love to pin this question for the end, Eric, but I want to know, like, what's your favorite, like, dumb Godzilla movie <laughs> at the end? Oh, oh gosh. Yeah, okay. So I'm, I'll give you some time to think about it. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Because there's both ends, right? There are, like, some very thoughtful, artistic, interesting Godzilla movies, and then there's some, like, real dumb ones. <laughs> I'm going to say, uh, okay, so I'm ready uh, I'm ready to make a call. Okay. Um, I, we don't have a sound effect. <laughs> There we go. <laughs> That's a weird gavel that I have. Um, I, I'm ready to make my decision here. Okay. Uh, and this is for all the listeners. So um, this is the movie that we will be recommending on Twitter. My decision is a tie. Yay! Because... A double feature picture show. Yes. I think, I think my decision is the requirement for all our Mind University students that are listening to this podcast, and we will be checking, uh, is that you should watch Godzilla... And Godzilla rides again, as I like to call it now. It's it's raids again, but I like to call it rides again. <laughs> and I like to think that Godzilla three is now Godzilla in the Ringo Kid. But <laughs> <laughs> I, you know, I don't know. Um, but yeah, I think Eric. I think Ashley, you made some amazing points. That there, there is something quite edgy and metaphorical, and some great, uh, um, you know, sort of storytelling in that, that. That is so close to Nagasaki, but. Eric also brought up the point that Godzilla 2, as I'm just going to call it right now, is really the one that m makes the mold for all the modern monster movies. So to me, I kind of think you need both. I kind of think you can't watch one without watching two. Well, the nice thing, too, about especially the early Godzilla movies is they're like a tight 90. So you can watch two in one night and you're not out that much of your life. <laughs> well, congrats to you both. Uh, we've now decided that you're going to watch Godzilla and Godzilla Raids again. Well done, both of you. High five through the internet. Uh, now we're going to make some, I, wanna, I, wanna, I do want to ask my Godzilla uh, experts some questions about other Godzilla stuff, if you are willing. I am a fair sure. scheme. Oh yeah, yeah, let's do it. All right, so now I want to answer that question that Ashley asked. Eric, what is a fun, dumb, or just like goofy Godzilla movie? Okay, well, you know, as far as the first one I think of when I think dumb is is honestly the 98 movie it, that was <laughs> uh, She's a it was Eric, it was Eric, just put awful a, put it put but, a pin in that we're going to talk about that yeah, in a minute yes no no worries <laughs> uh that's what i think it would done but i will go with um <clears throat> i'm going to go with uh, with the one i i had mentioned a, a little bit ago final wars um, because they just throw everything. There are kitchen sinks aplenty in Godzilla <laughs> Final Wars. He fights every single monster they have, including the 98 Godzilla. Yep, it's awesome. Uh, he, and, and then there was, I, I was watching it and uh, I saw the uh, the bit where uh, the, the alien is there and they're shooting laser blasters at him and he holds up his hand and they all stop in the air. I'm like, son of a gun. That's where, <laughs> that's where J.J. Abrams got it for Star Wars. <laughs> and... I remember you sharing that on. Yeah, yeah, it was. It just, it just. There, but I mean, there's just so much going on, and it is so ridiculous. And every problem they have is solved in the most over the top way possible. They're going after Godzilla with giant drill ships in Antarctica, just rocketing out of mountains. It is so goofy. It's so silly. Mutants, aliens, all the monsters. That's the big dumb fun one. Uh, by the way, I have Godzilla Final Wars Roar. Here we go, everybody. Okay. All right. <laughs> Just sounds like Godzilla. There you go. Uh, Ashley, do you have a big, dumb Godzilla movie that you like? Uh, love Godzilla versus Mothra, because Mothra is amazing, and we stan. Um, I'm going to go with a classic, Godzilla versus Mechagodzilla. Uh, it's amazing, uh, particularly if you are 
uh, Transformers, Beast Wars, Gundam, uh, Voltron. If you like anything that has to do, if you liked Edge of Tomorrow, whatever they retitled that movie when it came out, anything with Max, uh, it's great. It's so silly. And then in honor of Jason, I got to recommend 1967's Son of Godzilla. Yeah! A view of Godzuki. <laughs> BT dubs. Godzuki had his own animated series. Of course he did. Which I didn't know about until about three minutes ago when I was Googling. <laughs> uh, I can't find the original Mecha Godzilla Roar, but I did find Mecha Godzilla from 2014. Uh, so here we go, everybody. A lot of explosions. Wait, wait, that's from 2014. That's not right. All right, sorry. Never mind, everybody. <laughs> Never mind. Um, okay, so now... I want to talk about the 1998 American Godzilla movie Have starring. Have seen so, Eric? This is on you. <laughs> uh, starring Matthew Broderick, Hank Azaria. Um, hey, hey, hey! We love Hank Azaria. We do, but he's a weird choice as a lead in a Godzilla movie. Also, uh, Jean uh, um, Rousseau, I believe, from The Professionals, in there. Is that correct, uh, Eric Burnham? Am I correct? Uh, Jean Reno. Jean Reno. Isn't it? Excuse, yes. yes. Um, uh, Jean Jacques Rousseau is a philosopher. Well, first off, Eric, let's talk about this. I think the casting in that movie is very weird. I think Matthew Broderick is such a, especially in 98, he wasn't really, I mean. He's hot off Inspector Gadget. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> I mean, well, he, <laughs> he's, he's a weird choice for the lead of that movie. Well, what, what you got coming out of here as well is the movie that they did, uh, Devlin, uh, Dean Devlin, Roland Emmerich, before that was Independence Day, and they had Jeff Goldblum. So in the vein of weird heroes, Matthew Broderick, it's just close enough to, you know, the, the nerdy hero that they played around with with Jeff Goldblum. I think that's what they were going for. Um, and then just so many Simpsons actors above and beyond Hank Azaria. Harry Shearer was in there and uh, and uh, oh, crud. Uh, I just I, Nancy Cartwright. Yes. Yeah, yeah, correct. Yep. Yeah, she was in there, and uh, you know there was there was at least uh, I think there might have been at least one more. Uh, so it was it was fun to see them in there. Uh, but yeah, it was it was a. My brother put it this way: it was a fantastic remake of the Beast of tw uh, from Twenty Thousand Fathoms. <laughs> It was not a great Godzilla remake, but it was a great remake of The Beast from 20,000 Fathoms. It was also weird, and this was a big controversy at the time as well, the fact that they redesigned him to not even look like Godzilla. Like that was, Her. her. Excuse me, her. <laughs> because that was at least something like the 2014 American movie – a lot of people like made you know some body shaming jokes for Godzilla uh, where like it looked like Godzilla but you know quite bigger. But this Godzilla just looked like a dinosaur. And to me, I, I was like, why did you even pay for the license then? You should have just called it literally anything else. But I understand licensing and, and you know. But, like, yeah, that's part of the props, man. Like, you make a Godzilla movie because you want it to look like Godzilla. Yeah, they had the roar, and uh, that was it. <laughs> it, was a, it, it the, the creature was a giant iguana. And uh, it was – and then they also, you know uh, – nipped a little bit from Jurassic Park by having tiny Godzillas running around. Yes, Madison so, Square Garden and the whole, yeah, you raptors. Could, yeah, you could tell that ILM was just using basically the same dinosaur mm -hmm. character models for this movie. Um, uh, by the way, I could not find 2014's Roar. YouTube, what's going on here? Um, I can find like lots of clips from the movies. Um, all right, so final question to both of you um, before we get into some recommended reading I want to ask is, um, Eric, I'd love to hear your thought about this. Do you think... And I know I know Ashley's thoughts on this, but I'd love for you to follow up, Ashley. Um, do you think Godzilla should be an exclusive Japanese studio property? Do you think us Americans, do you think we should not be making Godzilla movies? Well, this reminds me of something that uh, an anecdote I heard somebody else tell about Shin Godzilla. And that was, do you think Americans will get it? And the response was, yes, we have people who you know are responsible for das disasters screwing up with bureaucracy as well. So I think that the answer is it can translate to you know the giant monster and and as a problem for for disasters. We've had plenty of disasters in this country we can use uh, kaiju to stand in for. But um yeah, I don't know uh I don't know if that uh, if that if that's enough. <laughs> but but you know Toho is uh, very good about Making sure that their uh, their ideas and rules for Godzilla's stick through, I think they learned that from 1998. 
Nice. Uh, so, so yeah, you know, I mean, I, th- I think, I think, you know, it takes a little bit uh, of work with the storytelling, but, uh, you know, they've just had more practice, obviously, to at refining the story to fit their uh, culture. Well, everybody, I think that's a great answer, especially from the man who is literally talking to the company that is responsible for everything that's cool about Godzilla right now. Uh, Ashley, do you have anything to add to that? I also want to add that even though I did say that, and, and we've said this about multiple comic book characters in the past, um, all it takes is the right story, man. But just based on based on the track record, uh, you know, the Japanese and Toho specifically, it's not that Toho is not involved in the American productions at all, but uh, they know what they're doing, man. They know what they're doing. Speaking speaking of knowing what you're doing, I found an amazing clip of Godzuki playing <laughs> with Godzilla's tail, some amazing uh, big lizard father bonding time. Maybe we'll hear Godzuki in this. Let's see what happens, everybody. That's about all we're going to get of Godzuki. <laughs> you know, the thing the thing that I learned is I, I got schooled by 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 another fan when I called it Godzuki. I prefer Godzuki because the actual name is Manila. And when I hear that, I just, you know, like the grow, city, M-I-N-I-L-L-A, like like, yeah, it uh, or the envelope, I guess. <laughs> like, well, yeah, like my Nila, M-I. So like mini Godzilla uh, as a portmanteau. Oh. But but uh, I, I just, you know, blame it on the rain pops into my head. Yeah. When I hear that, Godzuki so we stick just a, stick with Godzuki. Godzuki yeah. is just such a good name. I love. I just love the idea of Godzuki, the son of Godzilla. Everybody, just because I just think it's so goofy that I love it. I think like, there's just something so goofy that, I, that it, like it, to me, it, it flips around. It goes way past stupid and comes back da- back to endearing for me. But I, I, you know, I will echo what I just said as well. There's somebody out there who has a badass Godzuki story. I actually kind of like the what, what did you say it was originally, Eric? Mini Godzilla or Manila Godzilla? Yeah, yeah Manila. Manila Godzilla. Like, like mini yeah. Godzilla. Like I mini like Godzilla. That. Yeah. I yeah. like that. Manila. Mm-hmm. That's pretty good. I think Manila and the Ringo Kid would do well. <laughs> 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 All right, so let's move into our recommended reading, Miss Ashley. Yeah, what's that, Jason? Uh, that is a section of this podcast. Where if you want to know more about Godzilla, we have a section on our on our website called geekhistorylesson.com slash recommended reading. Everything we talk about on here will be there. You can click on a little widget. You can go on Amazon. You can pick it up. And a little bit of that will get stolen out of Jeff Bezos' pocket and come right back to us. So I am going to put the original Godzilla and I'm also going to put Godzilla Raids again on there because that's what we spent the lion's share of our time talking about today. And if you haven't seen them, you need to. It's the law now. I am also going to put on there at the time of this recording all available issues of Godzilla, Monsters and Protectors. I have been excited about this movie since uh, this movie, this comic, since Eric kind of hinted at it in his Instagram story a little while ago. Uh, And then when the trade is available, the collection is available for sale, we will replace it with that because Eric writes really good comics, friends. And I would say that even if he weren't listening to this recording, we're also (laughs) going to populate it with a bunch of his. uh, In fact, we've recommended your books before on the podcast. Uh, We're going to put a lot of Eric's other works up there as well. So you can uh, catch up that TMNT, Ghostbusters, Beast Wars, Spider-Man. Just get your full Eric Burnham library. And then, you know, when conventions open up, you can go and get them signed by him. Because it's a good collection. And you can get all that at geekhistorylesson.com slash recommended reading. Eric, if any of our listeners want to check out some of your comic books or follow you online or you have a Patreon as well, where can they find you online? Well, I've uh, got the uh, non-creative use of just my name, Eric Burnham, at. <laughs> that's uh, that's where to find me on Instagram, on Twitter, Patreon. It's all at Eric Burnham. So nice and simple. Uh, well, if you remember to spell Eric with a K and not a C, it becomes simple. Otherwise, who knows what you'll get. And can you tell anybody listening right now a little bit about your new comic book, Godzilla Monsters and Protectors? Sure thing. OK, so the idea behind this series, what they wanted to look at the uh, the middle grade market, young adults, all ages. Basically, if you watch a Pixar movie, that's who they want going. We're with big this. fans so, of that over here. There we go. Exactly. So they just want something that's 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 good for everybody. You can hand to a 12 year old or a 10 year old uh, just as easily as you can hand it to somebody who's been, you know, watching Godzilla for 40 years. And uh, so the main character is a 12 year old. Uh, half Japanese, half American, who is now going to school at the American school in Tokyo. He and his friends get swept up into 
a, a plot by the uh, Mothra twins, the Shobajin, to stop Godzilla from, you know, maybe deciding he wants to blow up the planet because people are, you know, a little bit too much with pollution. Mm-hmm. <laughs> I, I'm, where's, I'm trying where's to. There's a lie, though. <laughs> it's there, they, exactly. There was a lot of stuff that. Uh, that they they asked me to include in this book the uh, the pollution angle the um, the uh, t- tween I should say tween uh, protagonists the other monsters that they wanted used Mothra included and uh, yeah and uh, then I had to figure out how to balance it into one book and it's it's been an interesting process and a lot of fun and everybody is happy with it which you know excites me I can't wait to see what readers think. You have truly like pitched in my mind an ideal Godzilla book because I love you've got all the characters I love. And then I think anything all ages and middle grade is some of the most exciting comics being told right now. So I, I'm so excited, Eric. So oh, every, I can't wait to hear what you think. So everybody go out there and check out that book, Godzilla Monsters and Protectors. It is the perfect side reading material for Kong versus Godzilla. Uh, don't forget to follow the podcast. Ashley, where can they find this? You can do that at geekhistorylesson.com, facebook.com slash geekhistorylesson, or on Twitter at GHL Podcast. And don't forget to follow me on Twitter and Instagram at Jawin. That's J-A-W-I-I-N. Follow Ashley on Instagram and Twitter at Ashley V. Robinson. And Come on over to the Patreon if you want to hear a little bit more Godzilla talk. Uh, we're going to ask Eric how to write Godzilla. So that's the Geek History Lesson Extra episode over there at patreon.com slash Jawin. Uh, last part of our podcast is hashtag stick around, the final segment of the podcast where we make sure you stuck through all the plugs. Eric, as a Godzilla writer and creator, who who do you think is the best Godzilla villain? Oh, and I, I, I'm going to take humanity out of that, uh, that as an answer. <laughs> uh, I, I, I think I would be, uh, you know, crushed to death if I didn't mention Kid Ghidorah as the oh, uh, <laughs> the top of the top villain. But uh, also uh, those those uh, aliens that keep popping up, the uh, the zillions, they're 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 fun. They're useful. And, uh, you know, they can. Swiss Army knife in other villains for Godzilla to fight. So, you know, they they have that uh, plot. uh plot device element. So, you know, I'll, I'll, I'll split the difference between those two who actually work together in, oh gosh, at least one of the movies. <laughs> Probably seven. I don't know. <laughs> at, at least, yeah, yeah. You, they kind of blend together sometimes they and do. I they lose do. count. Yes. Uh, well, Eric, thank you again so much for joining us on this episode of Geek History Lesson. Well, again, thank you for having me. And everyone out there, thank you for joining us on this episode of Geek History Lesson. Thank you so much for listening. I have been Jason. Always love Godzuki Inman. I have been Ashley Victoria Robinson. And Professor Jason, would you please dismiss the class? Class is roar.